So I have here Amore Sacher. He's the top dog in the Bitcoin Cash world on development. Uh, Amore, I hear there is a nice hard fork coming up. Actually, you do every six months for hard fork. How does that work with you? Uh, yeah, so, you know, so Bitcoin Cash is all about uh, scaling on chain. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people have decided that, you know, you just change one number, the block size and everything is going to work great. But actually, there is various other aspect of the software you need to change for for everything to work properly so to make sure that happens we have an upgrade that is scheduled every six months where we can change a few stuff maybe um yeah maybe it's a bit fast so maybe in a year or two we're gonna slow that down a bit but it's also the opportunity to it's nice to have that scheduled there is an official hard fork and then there's going to be two chains and may the best chain win uh, i mean that's a bit, that's an always an interesting way to see how that works hey how did you how did you become involved in Bitcoin Cash? Why are you why are you so enthusiastic about it and why did you spend your whole life now on it? Um, so I first was enthusiastic about Bitcoin. I learned about Bitcoin in late 2010 or so. I was very interested by the, the whole ID. I mean, um, it was like revolutionary technology and, and the you know potential impact is, is I think, I think pretty big. Um, and then in 2015 or 16 or so, uh, the whole block size debate started getting very big and... It was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Like Little nightmare. We entered into a grind lock, yeah. right? And so there was essentially two parts of the Bitcoin community. One part that wanted to increase the size of the block and the other part that wanted to focus effort on second layer scaling technology. And what happened is that none of those sides were getting what they wanted because, um, uh, you know, no side had you know, sufficient agreement among all the participants to do whatever they wanted on their roadmap. And so the whole situation was blocked. And so in, in late 2016, I started um, explaining how we could, uh, you know, we could scale on chain, like putting a roadmap out there and various people got interested. So I started working on it full time and it ended up with the creation of, of Bitcoin Cash. So who are the people? I mean, I know Roger Ver, I know Bitmain. I mean, who are the big, who are the big groups and people behind Bitcoin Cash who uh, who helped uh, starting it, except for you? Yeah. So uh, obviously, Bitcoin ABC was the first software, but there is more than that. Uh, there is uh, via BTC. I think was very important because they were the first company to mine it and the first company to trade it. So they have a mining pool and an exchange. And so they, uh, even like before the launch, they created a future market for it. And then at the launch, they started mining it and trading it from day one. So that was extremely valuable. Uh, Bitprim, which is a company from Argentina, they helped a lot setting up a ton of infrastructure. So backends for wallets, uh, block explorers and stuff like that. Uh, they help also um, managing test nets and stuff like that. So people could test before the launch. Um, those would probably be, yeah, the, the two very main important actors. And then we had a bunch of actors like Bitcoin.com that were sympathetic, but not all in from day one because they were still betting on Segwit 2x at the time. But then Segwit 2x did not happen and all those actors um, uh, came to BCH. So now we have a pretty big ecosystem. Bitmain? Uh, yeah, Bitmain. Bitmain and BTC.com, how involved were they? Um, I mean, like they supported for all the product. Bitmain for a while was taking only BCH to sell miners. Uh, they have... Um, I mean, like, I don't know first hand, but uh, what is what is said around is that they have a million BCH. So obviously they, you know, believe in it pretty. <laughs> invested heavily in it. Yes, yes. Um, they also have invested in various companies in the ecosystem. So uh, they are they are a big supporter as well. Okay. What do you think of the hackathon here in Amsterdam? I mean, is this the first hackathon you've been to with Bitcoin Cash in Europe? This. Uh, so this is the first Bitcoin Cash hackathon I've been to. This is not the first hackathon I've been to. Um, the, the Bitcoin Cash hackathon. Yeah. That is really fun to have something like that. Yeah, so I think it's great uh, for for two reasons. The first one is that it gets people to meet each other and you know get connection and you know brainstorm ideas. Um, so so that's good for the ecosystem in general, you know. And the second stuff is that you know maybe maybe some good ideas are gonna come out of this. Um, this is also a good way to see. So uh, Akaton is, is very uh, specific in the sense that you need to try to realize something in a day. And so you need to have some idea, but you need to also have the ability to ruthlessly prioritize. Let's see how, let's see. The yeah, let's see how they're doing. So here's the list. Which one uh, can you comment on? Okay, so there are, there are a uh, various ones like uh, HPO and, and Proof of Photo and a few others that are 
around uh, identity management on the blockchain, uh, which is, um, I think it's, po it's probably an interesting use case. Um, where we're like a lot of people are working on that these days. It's an extremely important subject, identity on the blockchain. So these are all kinds of different aspects. Yeah, because what we're seeing these days is that you have government like in China that have this kind of like social score and it's kind of Orwellian. And so uh, having a decentralized alternative to this kind of system would, I think, be um, you know good if we don't want to live in an Orwellian world. Next one. Um, I don't know. So there, there are stuff like, uh, I think, Onestream. They didn't have a name yesterday, so I think that's them. Mm -hmm. um, where they essentially want to do, um, um, you know, a, 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 a site where you can have blurry images and you can do micropayment to uh, display images. So it could be uh, used for memes and stuff like that. It can probably use, uh, be used for, like, you know, hot uh, kind of picture as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's always a okay always nice hey what about VPN for BA BTC BC um, I'm not quite sure uh, what they want to do to be honest um, so anyone you, anyone more you know which you find is interesting yeah, so, so what else then there are uh, other category of project like uh, permissionless token prototype and event ticket confirmation service that are more on the token aspect of it so we've seen that Bitcoin Cash is enabling token in a new way compared to other, um, you know, yeah, compared to Ethereum. So Ethereum validates everything on chain, which pose uh, various scaling challenges. Um, the way we do it on Bitcoin Cash is that the validation of token is done client side, which offer much better scaling properties and also an ability to, um, you know, iterate much faster to create new token solutions. Um, it comes with other trade-off, but I think this is, a, a, you know, I think this is a better trade-off, but you know. Okay. So future. we need for a nice worldwide system, we need uh, lots of transactions, fast, uh, fast block size, and uh, also smart contracts and, uh, you know, do smart things that you can create your own token. How much is BTBCH doing compared to Ethereum? Uh, so I think BCH has much better scaling property than Ethereum. Uh, on the smart contract front, however, it has much more limited capability, and this is not completely random. One of the reasons it scales much better is because its, um, it's smart contract system is defined in a way that is a, a bit different. Uh, and it's script-wise. Yeah. yeah, so the, um, well, Ethereum has script as well. They have this script system called Solidity, but Ethereum script system can interact with a lot of state in the system, and uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash script system is very isolated, interact with um, very few state in the system. As a result, it's much easier to scale, but it's also more limited what you can do with it. I think it's, um, you know, if you want to do really smart contract, Ethereum is probably the better solution, but for everything that is, um, you know, primarily money, and, and maybe with a smart contract aspect, but that is a secondary aspect, uh, BCH would be a, a better option. But if I want to do an, uh, uh, if I want to raise money with a token, uh, you know, do an, uh, do an, uh, make shares on the token, can you do that on Bitcoin Cash already? Yes, yeah, so there seems to be, uh, so there are many, many different technologies for a token on Bitcoin Cash. Um, I want to have, I mean, security. securities are really, I want to have start a company and, and, and sell shares without paper and I want to basically have a security, security system uh, which is really reliable and easy to use. Is, is Bitcoin Cash pay able to do that? Yeah, so there are two of those technologies that seems to be imposing themselves as standard now. Uh, the first one is Wormhole, which is uh, similar to what uh, um, the Omni protocol on Bitcoin. So there are various tokens, maybe like the biggest one would be Tether, very controversial token, but yeah. it was very successful as well. So Wormhole is very similar to that system. And the second one is SLP, which um, uh, is a bit newer, has uh, some better property on some aspects, uh, notably for SPVs, but um, maybe well integrated with existing ecosystem because, you know, it's, it's more different. Like all the Omni ecosystem is very easy to port to Wormhole. And SLP is important. So the answer is yes, you can do yeah. it. Yes, hey. Did you like this video? There's more where this came from. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about our new videos.